Okay, let's get started. The video today is going to be a little bit different from the ones that we've been doing recently. We invite you to check our series on what can we learn from. This one, though, today is going to be a bit more personal, and it has to do with overworking. In my case, it has to do with my not paying attention to some pretty obvious signs over the years of something being wrong, but uh, just kind of pushing through, because I guess that's what artists do. And specifically, I'm referring to my right arm being in such pain currently that I now have to consider alternatives like working with my non-dominant hand so I can give my right arm the rest it deserves. Now, this probably started around 10 years ago where I was working on larger scale paintings, paintings ranging from 40 by 60 inches to 80 by 60 inches and some larger. And while the mechanics of how I work now are quite different because how I paint nowadays is probably more similar to how traditional animators would work. I have an inclined drawing table and I paint sitting down, which is quite strange and quite peculiar for an oil painter. Most of my life I've spent it painting standing up. I think it's the best practice and you're taught from the beginning to try and paint standing up and the reason we're taught that is to be able to have distance from our artwork while we're working. So ideally you're searching for something in your palette, you mix it, you put it down on your surface and then you step back to see the effect of the decision that you made on your painting. That's how you gauge your painting. You have a better idea of wholeness, a better idea of unity when you step back. So usually when you see oil painters working, it's like a constant dance of going towards your surface, making decisions, and then stepping back to see how those decisions impacted your painting. It's a constant back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And when your painting's standing up, your posture is super important but you're using your arm in very different ways. Sometimes you paint with your whole body if the uh, painting is of a larger size, of larger dimensions. Sometimes you paint with your arm starting from the shoulder. Uh, sometimes you paint with your arm starting from the elbow. Sometimes you paint with your arm starting from the wrist. And sometimes you kind of barely move your uh, hand and you just move your fingers. So in essence, and depending on the type of painting that you do, you use your whole body down to your dominant hand and to the fingertips. That's what usually happens. It's kind of like a broader use of all the mechanics of your body and then highly specific ones if you're painting very, very tight, very small details. I would say I fell into that category for many, many years. I used to paint a combination of small to medium to large to very large paintings. So it was fairly balanced. But after years of probably overworking myself, and when I say overworking, I think many artists can relate. If you are self-disciplined, it's not as if somebody is demanding that you work long hours. But I think part of the dynamics of being an artist rely upon us putting pushing through. And I think that because it is in our very nature to not really have work hours, I really think that that's why artists are taken advantage of in industries. For example, the uh, viz dev industry really takes advantage of people having that willingness to push and to get better and to work and how demanding we are of ourselves that our work showcases our true potential. So sadly, this thing that makes us, I think, special is also a thing that makes a ton of industries take advantage of us. So going back to my own practice years ago, I started feeling that my elbow was in pain. And it wasn't like a regular sort of pain, you know, the stuff that you feel sore and then it just goes away after a little bit. No, this was more of like a piercing pain that just wouldn't go away. And of course, it was exacerbated by long working hours. So I'm a very stubborn person and I just didn't pay attention to it. And I thought, well, I'm going to paint through the pain. It doesn't matter. It's just like a nagging pain. And I'm going to feel like I'm complaining too much and noticing that pain too much if I just pay attention to it. So I decided to sweep it under the rug and just completely push it to the side. Now, this was terrible because there was a point where the pain was just too much. So I had to let go of my ego and say, no, I have to go to a doctor and they have to check this. And I remember first going to an orthopedic doctor that was not specialized in arm. And they saw me and they were like, well, you're going to get a better diagnosis if you go to somebody that specializes in elbow and wrist. And that's not quite common here in Colombia. There's a lot of doctors that are specialized in hips and in legs. But I eventually found a sports doctor and she was wonderful. And she took a look and she said, well, you know, go get a CAT scan. And I did, which was very, very, very 
painful because at that time, my arm was in a lot of pain and having to remain for 45 minutes completely still in a position where your arm is in pain was horrible. I remember that being an absolutely horrible endeavor. When the results were back, I had epicondylitis. You know, it was very evident. And when I went back to the doctor, she was like, yeah, we have to do physical therapy and you have to rest. When she said you have to rest, I was like, I don't know if I could do that. Like, this is my life. This is my livelihood. I depend on painting. So I can't just say I'm going to take two, three months off. Because I remember what she suggested was around two months of resting my arm and lowering the inflammation and then getting some physical therapy. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't envision my life without working every day. I'm the sort of person that if I don't work for a week because I'm on holidays or something, I feel weird. I feel like I have an itch to paint. And it's not like an unhealthy itch to paint. And this is what makes it worse. This is what makes us artists sometimes irrational because any rational being, if you're in physical pain and they tell you that you have to rest, so inflammation goes down and you have to do some physical therapy and then you have to do some strengthening, it makes sense and you kind of go through that. But I think what makes it very difficult for us, and this is clearly my case, is that I don't quite understand my life outside of painting. I think painting is so interwoven, intertwined with how I understand my life, with the meaning of my life that is very difficult to excise it from my daily routine, to extract it from my life and say, okay, you're just going to rest because I kind of feel, I don't know, I was going to say hopeless, but that's probably a little too much. I think that my purpose is to be a painter. But I also think that painting provides me with answers and not answers that have to do with the painting realm, but answers that have to do with life. I observe life through painting if you take that away from me, I feel like I'm a very static being and it scares me to not have that. I think that that's the underlying thing in all of this. It's just that I'm really, really scared to think of myself without painting in my life. Now, this was around 10 years ago, like I said, and sadly, what I think happened in those 10 years was just me learning how to live with pain. It's like a rock in my shoe. I just understand that it's present. I understand that when I have long sessions of painting or painting where I have to like really, really stress my hand, painting maybe a lot of detail, and I'm just concentrating a lot of strain in my forearm, those days are terrible. Those days are absolutely horrible. It is painful. You know, I'm not usually a person that complains about these things. Once again, sadly, I think I just learned that this was present and it was going to be part of my life. And that was it. It was just going to be like a, a painful companion throughout my life. But sadly, in the last couple of weeks, it kind of spiked again. And I don't know why, I don't know what made it spike, I have no idea, because in a dumb way, in a very kind of uneducated way, I have like a hope in the back of my brain that at some point it's just going to leave, like that pain is going to disappear. But I've noticed that it's my perception of that pain that sometimes dissipates, but the pain is always there. And I guess what's happening now is what's happened all the time, which is overworking and overusing my arm and overextension. So much so that, and you could ask Danny, I'm just a super proud person and I usually don't say anything. But um, there was a day that I think I told Danny, like, I don't know what's going on, but my arm is in like really bad pain. Once again, that kind of kept going for a few days. And I just told her, I don't know what to do. And one day... What I decided was to just confront it and realize that if I don't do something about it, then this is not going to go away and it's going to get progressively worse and worse and worse. The only alternative that I saw was to contemplate painting with my non-dominant hand. This was very scary for me. I've never really attempted to see if I can behave like a painter with my left non-dominant hand. And what was strange was that I've always believed, because you kind of believe these things, but I've always believed that painting goes on in the brain. The arm is just a conduit that helps you output what you have in your brain. Painting is about perception and painting is about translating that sensitivity into paint and that configures an image that represents you visually trying to, I don't know, in my case, kind of understand the world, understand my surroundings. So I've always believed that painting is not really something that needs of an able hand. 
Now, granted, there's a ton of artwork that really relies upon the ability that you have garnered throughout the years and the sensibility that you have imprinted onto your mark making. And sometimes there are people that have incredible control and incredible mark making that can only be done with your dominant hand. The mechanics are incredibly finely tuned and they enable you to produce these very delicate works of art. So while that is true, I also believe that the underlying, the sort of fundamental truth was that painting resided elsewhere. That it didn't matter if you have clumsy or heavy hands like myself or if you have super delicate hands like I would say Danny has. Danny has like this beautiful touch. It doesn't matter. Painting goes on in your brain. But I had never put that to the test. And I think that horrified me. That really, really scared me. So I always kind of blindly believed that I would be able to paint with my left, but I never thought of proving it to myself that this was indeed true. So when I considered painting with my left, it was more a matter of being horrified by the possibility of not being able to paint at all and then you know, having this myth that I had in my head where I believe that painting goes on in the brain just completely crumble in front of me. I think that's one of the things that stopped me from wanting to see if this was indeed true for me. But, you know, life works in weird ways. And I was in a position where it wasn't a matter of having other alternatives, but it was a matter of thinking, I need to rest my arm. So it's either me believing in this abstract thought and enduring this pain that only becomes more and more incremental with the passing of time or saying, you know what, let's see what's there. Let's explore what is there. I opted for that. I opted for painting with my non-dominant hand. I did two paintings prior to this one, which were incredible experiences because I had never experienced, at least not recently, but I hadn't felt what I felt with my brain during those two paintings in a long, long time. The parallel that I think I can draw between what I feel when I'm painting with my left is exactly what I felt when I was beginning to paint, where you have to be extra concentrated because... The fundamentals of painting have remained the same for millennia. They haven't changed. They don't need to change in that sense. They can be monolithic because they're very simple truths that take lifetimes to master. They're the same information. If I'm painting right now or if I was painting 25 years ago, I was thinking, I was paying attention, I was concentrating, focusing on the same things, the same aspects. It's never, ever changed. I always say this to people, but the formal qualities of painting don't become more complex. You could be doing what you believe to be advanced painting, but it doesn't quite have anything to do with the fundamental aspects of painting. Those are always the same. Given that that's a constant throughout my life, I was kind of able to recognize that my brain was behaving in a way that I hadn't felt for years. And I can only describe it as this immense effort to concentrate on those fundamental aspects. What's funny is that I didn't realize how automatic my painting had become. You know, I'm a sort of person that can have a conversation while painting and I could be doing like other things because painting has become almost like a background operation in my brain that I could listen to a podcast and have a conversation with Danny. And if my kids show up and they ask questions, I can answer those questions. And maybe there's like little moments where I'm like, oh, give me a second, I have to do this tiny little stroke. And then I say, I'm sorry, you know, what were you talking about? But usually I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine holding like an open conversation about anything while I'm painting. It's very comfortable for me. I feel like I can live and paint at the same time. I don't have to put my painting cap on and say, Okay, the world needs to shut down because I'm painting. I need to have noise-canceling headphones. I need to be laser-focused. I just need to be in the zone, only thinking about painting. No, it's actually quite the opposite for me. It just feels like regular life. But when I'm working with my left, I remember Danny trying to ask me something and my brain feeling like there's smoke coming out of my head, like I'm overheating because it almost feels like I can't deal with a lot of that information at the same time. Like I can't deal with comprehension and speech and trying to solve a painting at the same time. Aside from my left arm being incredibly clumsy and just not having, obviously, 
the same sort of mechanical ability and acuity as my right arm, I could totally feel my brain working differently. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if there's like a neurological reason for it. But if I was a test patient, I could tell you for a fact from doing this for many, many, many years that it feels different. And it has nothing to do with your shoulder hurting a little bit on your left or your left hand, your non-dominant hand in my case, cramping up because it's trying to like squeeze too hard on the uh, brush in the hopes of gaining a little bit more control over your mark making. I expected my whole left arm to be super weak. Danny jokingly says that I can't even brush my teeth with my left. My left is completely useless. I don't quite work out, so it's not as if I'm trying to have like symmetrical strength in both my arms. So I'm literally a case of a very normal human being that has abilities in my right arm that my left very clearly don't possess. So very much like Morty in the Mad Max episode. But going back to how it feels, it's amazing how the brain just starts to rely upon on double checking and triple checking every single decision that you do because I'm so clumsy because you know when I'm trying to mix paint I over mix you know sometimes I try to dip like just the tip of my brush on my paint and then bring it to the mix and it's obviously too much and the mix becomes like super tinted and I have to adjust so it's really tough it's really hard to find that fine tune balance so what I notice what the brain does in order to over correct is that it has to like double check triple check it has to make absolutely sure that things are in the right place now, the funny thing is that because the hand is so clumsy, it can't really put your choices down, your decisions down in the right place. Like you kind of know what you want to do, but mechanically you can't do it. And it's quite fascinating dealing with this mechanical obstacle, but also going through how your brain has to shut down a little bit and say, we're going to devote our whole energy and our concentration into trying to figure this out. It's fascinating. It's almost like you're going through checklists all the time in your brain, which is something that you don't quite do when you're painting in an autopilot way with your dominant hand. When you are doing it with your left, it's almost like all this information that you know resurfaces and you have to deal with it at a conscious level constantly. And I guess that becomes such a strain, such a weight that the brain has to carry that your whole energy is devoted to that. It is really quite remarkable. What was born from a physical necessity, you know, this was almost an obligation that I had with myself that I've been irresponsible with. And it's something that had to happen a long time ago, but I just swept it under the rug. I thought that it would go away on its own, which clearly it won't. I thought that I could just live with it. I thought that I could like mute it and not pay attention to it. But pain is pain. And the truth is you're probably going to be able to subdue it and to not concentrate on it for a while, for a long time for me. But if you're overworking yourself and if you are overexerting that mechanical aspect of your body, and if it's just a part of your body that can't deal with that much physical strain, then it's just going to get worse and worse. I'm very happy that I kind of discovered for myself that what I've always thought about painting is true. That painting is not solely something that depends on a mechanical aspect. It is clearly not something that is justifiable by the output. So if you have a finely tuned arm, that's great. That's a wonderful tool. But if that tool is a little more blunt and is a little more like a makeshift tool, you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. That is clearly not an obstacle. I was very happy and it gave me a ton of tranquility to realize that what I've always believed to be true, at least in my case, it is true. Painting lives beyond what we can do with our hands. It's kind of bigger than that. It's a way of understanding the world. It's a way of perceiving the world. It's a way of searching through nature for answers. It is all those things that I've always, always believed in. And if you told me right now that I couldn't use my dominant arm to paint anymore for the rest of my life, I would be in peace. I would be completely fine. And I would know that I would have a way of conveying how I see the world through painting with my non-dominant hand. And I think that that's quite beautiful. 
I think that speaks about painting going beyond these physical attributes that we imbue an object with. I think all of us painters, we kind of idolize the object of painting, you know, the resulting painting. But the truth is, maybe painting goes beyond the object that's created. So I'm very happy I found an alternative. I'm very hopeful that I can now mix my painting practice. So I'm going to try to do some paintings with my dominant hand and for sure constantly go back to my non-dominant hand, especially in those days when I feel like I need a rest. I'm very much at peace with doing that. And I feel that my non-dominant hand does not betray my sensibility as a painter. I still very much so feel like a painter. I feel like I can draw. I feel like I can paint. Is it the way I know myself to draw or I know myself to paint? In a superficial way, no, because there's this kind of lack of control that's also quite wonderful. But in a deeper way, I 100% see myself under all those decisions. And it's kind of beautiful to identify yourself without the obviously very attractive surface quality that is the paint layer. So I guess what's hidden underneath all of this is kind of rediscovering your essence as a sensible human being through an act that is more pure, more directly connected to your brain. So I would highly recommend people try this and not be scared of it, not be scared of the results. Don't judge yourself harshly. And especially do it if you're like me and you're going through physical strain that comes from obvious overworking. I think we owe it to ourselves and our own practice to just pay attention. So that was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.